Welcome back, Rachel Syme. Hi again. This is a story about a friend of mine. A few weeks ago, I met my friend Annette for a single glass of champagne inside the Gramercy Park Hotel lobby. Both of these choices were hers. She tends to set the agenda when we meet, and she has earned the right to do so, because Annette is about to turn 96 years old. Yeah, in April. But not that you would know her age from emailing with her. She is still wildly sharp, especially on the page, and she has this keen grasp on how to display and use emojis. She deploys them so well. She loves green hearts and cry faces. She also reads everything faster than I do. She reads the New York Times in the morning with her breakfast. Do you, like me, have a stack of old New Yorker magazines piling up in a corner that make you feel guilty about not keeping up? Annette doesn't. She's already read it. She tells me about experimental theater performances happening downtown in a brownstone that I've never heard of. She goes out almost every night to the opera or the ballet or to see a French film. She was just emailing me about a French film. Her best friend Carmen, who is 88, was a, is a, and was a supermodel who was on the cover of Vogue for the first time when she was 16 and still walks the Paris runways. What I'm trying to say is that Annette runs with a really fast crowd. <laughs> but as she told me recently when I called her up, she's not as fast as she used to be. She walks with a cane now, which she matches every day to her outfit, by the way. And um, makes her feel steady, but she can't stroll at the clip that she once did. And that was what she loved. She loved absolutely strolling everywhere around Manhattan. These days, she lives in an apartment on Gramercy Park, where she has lived alone for 40 years. And she walks as far as she can every day. What she misses most, though, about being able to amble for miles and miles and miles around the streets of the city is looking at herself inside shop windows. <laughs> Annette told me that for her, shop windows are the best mirrors in New York City. For one thing, they're always full length. <laughs> And they're always crystal clear because the shoppers have to see the products, so they're very well maintained. Um, but really, you can't see yourself so clearly. You see a fuzzy, romanticized version splashed against whatever bright baubles are inside. Annette once told me that when she was much younger once, she spotted Greta Garbo walking down Fifth Avenue, and she decided to follow her surreptitiously for a few blocks. And she said Garbo kept stopping every few feet, not to gaze at the wares inside the stores, but just to bask in her own reflection. <laughs> she stopped and looked at herself a lot, Annette told me. And she also told me that she understood that very well. You see, Annette has worked in the beauty industry for over 70 years. She just wrote a memoir about it. It's called Spritzing to Success. You should all check it out. Uh, she worked in the cosmetics trade industry um, and then for another trade magazine and then she worked for this company, kind of like Elizabeth Arden, that taught young women how to groom themselves and perfume themselves to meet a dream date in the 1950s. She formed her own publicity agency. She was one of the first women to do so. She actually worked in an office building where um, there were no women's bathrooms. <laughs> That's how, in the 60s, she had to take an elevator four floors to see herself in that mirror. Um, she ran the Fragrance Foundation for over four decades, and she still never leaves the house without wearing rouge. She has two big full-length mirrors in her foyer in her house, and she can make sure her outfit matches, but she told me that she mostly uses a special little mirror these days so that she can check out the back of her head. She says, when you get older, your hair starts thinning, and you have to care about such things. But she said her mother used to ask the question as she got older, who is that stranger in the mirror? And when I asked Annette how, if that's how she feels, she said no. She still sees herself when she looks there. She says she feels more like herself than ever. She just stops less often to gaze in the shop windows, and maybe her garbo days are behind her. But she told me, she called me back to tell me she loves the lovely mirrors inside the Four Seasons restaurant in the bathroom. And she likes the ones inside Radio City Music Hall. New York is a city of mirrors. It really is. If you live here long enough, you see yourself reflected everywhere. In fact, one of my feelings about what makes a real New Yorker is that 
you have a favorite mirror in the city. See, some of you are thinking about it, right? I actually asked a few people this recently on Twitter, and I got a like hundred responses in under an hour. People feel really passionate about where they stop to look in their own eyes. So here are some of my favorite responses. At Kathy Luby wrote, I love the slanted mirrored panel on the ceiling of the laundromat on the west side of 2nd Avenue between 80th and 81st Streets. <laughs> at Emily MCMC wrote, the mirrored door at Penn Station, lower level, next to where the wine store used to be. <laughs> at Big Obes wrote, my reflection in a Duane Reed window at 2 a.m. when I'm wine tipsy after a mediocre encounter on the Upper East Side. And at Myra Crowell wrote, there is one glass panel among many in my elevator bank at work that makes me look so slender and very tall but without the usual distortion. If I'm waiting for an elevator, I go all Narcissus, there is twirling. <laughs> I too have mirrors I cherish in this city. I could tell you about the pink glow above the mirrors in the Glossier store that make your skin look as soft as a piglet's. I could tell you about the skyscraper uh, on the corner of Bryant Park, the skyscraper mirror where you can stand at just the right angle and you can see yourself at the exact same height as the Empire State Building. <laughs> and there's a house in my neighborhood that installed reflective windows and they keep a sign up that says, free selfies. <laughs> but the more I think about it, my favorite mirror in New York right now is Annette. I look at her and I see a hopeful vision of myself projected years into the future. I want to dress up for her. I want to stand up straighter for her. And then I want to go outside, and I want to stroll, and I want to look. Great to sign. You've got to introduce me to Annette at some point, Rachel. Right? <laughs>